Ever since a police officer fatally shot 18-year-old Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri almost nine years ago, police use of force against people of color, especially black Americans, has been under intense scrutiny. Much of the attention is on firearms, but types of force considered to be less lethal, like chokeholds and tasers, are also getting a closer look. As John Yang reports, tasers may rank below guns on the spectrum of police force, but using them has resulted in deaths. And note that some images in this report are disturbing. Sonia Williams struggles with the death of her firstborn child, Daryl Tyree Williams. He was a good person, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say that he was perfect, you know what I'm saying? He had his flaws like, like we all do. But he was loved by everyone. He didn't have no enemies. She's especially troubled by the way Daryl died, in the custody of police who had used a taser on him several times. He didn't deserve this. Not a day to go by, I don't think about him. It's just hard. It's a hard thing to go through. The events leading up to Daryl Williams' death began unfolding at about 2 a.m. on a January morning. Williams was sitting in a parked car on Raleigh, North Carolina's southeast side. What's going on, officer? Put, put both hands on the car. Police were in the predominantly black neighborhood on what they call proactive patrol because, they said, officers are frequently called to the area. In Williams' pants pocket, an officer finds a folded $1 bill with a white powdery substance. Put your hand on your back. Wow. Both hands on your back. Wow. There's a struggle as Williams tries to get away. The officer draws his yellow taser and fires. Its probes make contact with Williams and deliver an electrical charge designed to temporarily paralyze him. Williams momentarily breaks free and is tased again. On your back. With officers holding him down, Williams pleads right with now, him. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Behind your back. Now. Three, two, one. In all, officers had tased Williams four times. About an hour later, Williams was pronounced dead at a hospital. He was 32 years old. An autopsy concluded that Williams died from sudden cardiac arrest in the setting of cocaine intoxication, physical exertion, conducted energy weapon use, and physical restraint. The death was ruled a homicide. Daryl Williams lost his life because the Raleigh Police Department apparently doesn't have anything better to, to do than to harass black and brown people. Don Blagrove is executive director of Emancipate NC, a North Carolina group that focuses on race and policing and mass incarceration. She's also one of the lawyers representing the Williams family. She underscores the role of the taser in Williams' death. It can be a deadly weapon. In the hands of Raleigh Police Department officers, clearly, because Daryl Tyree Williams is no longer with us, there's no authoritative database of deaths that follow the use of a conducted electrical weapon, but a 2017 investigation by Reuters put the tally at more than 1,000, nearly all of them since the early 2000s. They classify them as less lethal today because the lethality is still present. Kalfani Ture is a professor of criminal justice at Widener University and a former police officer. He says police shouldn't use tasers since officers can't know if a target has health problems. We're not trained as medical experts when we train to use tasers. We simply train around the mechanical parts of it. Tasers are by far law enforcement's most commonly used conducted energy weapon. Its manufacturer, Axon, wouldn't speak with us on camera, but materials the company provided cite findings of independent studies that 99.75% of incidents in which a taser was used did not result in serious injury, and that of the tools available to police to exert force, a taser is least likely to result in significant injury, less likely even than unarmed physical force. The lead author of both studies is Dr. William P. Bozeman, an emergency medicine professor at Wake Forest University School of Medicine. He says his work is not funded by Axon. When it comes to cardiac effects, uh, it's extremely rare, and the current estimate is one in two to two and a half million. Bozeman says decades of research on tasers have established that they're safe, even if there are rare instances in which they contribute to a death. A taser can absolutely kill you. Whether it can do that by a cardiac means is still a topic of discussion, but there have clearly been cases 
where people were standing in an elevated position and they were struck with a taser and the muscular lockup occurred and they fell and they had a major head injury and they died. But tasers are actually remarkably safe. We owe public safety and communities a better way to stop threats without having to take a life. That's taser's key selling point. Exxon estimates that about 285,000 lives have been saved or serious injuries prevented because police use their devices instead of a gun. Raleigh attorney Don Blagrove says tasers may be a useful tool, but the issue is how police use them. The reality is we need an entire paradigm shift around when force is necessary for law enforcement, even if it is non-lethal weapons. If it is used with the intent to cause harm, to cause pain, to punish someone, that is always going to result in the people of Raleigh and anywhere else being in danger of death for even simple interactions with law enforcement. In June, Wake County District Attorney Lauren Freeman announced that she was not bringing criminal charges against any officers in connection with Williams' death. You know, I would say this is one of the cases that, you know, I personally have struggled with, um, you know, more than others, candidly. Among the circumstances, she said, led her to her conclusion, what she calls the limited uses of tasers on Williams, none longer than five seconds. The question of whether officers heard Williams tell them about his heart condition and the complications posed by the autopsy report, which cited a combination of factors contributing to Williams' death rather than a single cause. At the end of the day, the law enforcement actions, while difficult to watch, while leading to a very tragic end, were lawful and in some instances, you know, were what were necessary at that point in time to bring a situation under control. And so hopefully we learn from these situations um, kind of on both sides of that interaction. Six officers involved in Williams' death were placed on paid administrative leave. The Raleigh Police Department declined an interview request and wouldn't go beyond a written statement. It said it is department policy that a conducted energy weapon shall only be used in response to active resistance. The statement adds, it is important to note that our officers are required to make split-second decisions in quickly evolving circumstances. Darrell was not trying to harm law enforcement. He did not pose a physical threat. He was trying to get away. He was trying to save his own life. Ultimately, without the intervention of other human beings, namely the Raleigh Police Department, Darrell would not have died on that night. If this were some random non-law enforcement citizen who had committed a crime, that resulted in the death of someone else, that person would be charged. The DA's decision also frustrates Daryl's mother, Sonia. I don't have anything against the tasers. I just think it's a way to use it. They, they use obsessively on, on my child. And until something be done about it, they're going to keep on doing it. Now that the district attorney has decided not to do anything, Sonia Williams and her attorney said they're exploring their options in their pursuit of accountability for the police and justice for Daryl Tyree Williams. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang.